You damn player haters never wanna see me blow Flamboyant entertainment, CEO Yo, the spotlight is mine, it ain't his no more When Lee come home, nigga What is good, everybody? What you watching? Uh, today is what, Friday? And Friday is a uh, special presentation day because I got some things for you. So today, we are going to hear an interview from a man named Fountain Hughes. He's an ex-slave. He's going to have some words for us. This is an unedited interview that was conducted in the early 1900s. I believe when he was doing this interview, I think he, was, I think he said he was 103 years old, which means he's seen a lot of stuff. So, this ain't going to be a video where I do much talking because I'm going to leave the floor to the ancestor. So, this is going to be one of those soak it in. Just sit back and listen because he's got some things that uh, are good advice uh, and he's got some stories about his experiences and some stuff that you won't hear on the news. Stuff that people aren't talking about and stuff that you won't get in textbooks. You actually have the voice of the person who went through the things and seen the stuff he saw. So, and uh, I want to actually point out a little special something. It was my grandfather's birthday yesterday, as my mom pointed out. Because to be completely candid with you, I didn't know the exact date. Um, he sounds just like my grandfather. The speech pattern, spot on. Some of the words they say, the pronunciations and everything, even the tone of his voice is pretty close. So this one was the one I chose to lead off with. And um, as long as I have interviews, I'm going to bring you something like this on Fridays. We're going to try and keep this uh, going as long as we can. I mean, it's going to run out. Excuse me. It's going to run out because there's not a whole lot of interviews to work with, but I do have some. So, without further ado, we're going to listen to the words of Mr. Fountain Hughes. You're going to like this. Let's go. Whoa, videos. I'm Aquarian OG. You should get to know me. Hit that sub and like so you can stay up to date with what, we, what I'm bringing to the table. I'm going to grow this channel and do some good things with it. We're looking for that hundredth person to start off that thousand run. But in the meantime and in between time, let's go. Well, just tell me what your name is. My name is Fountain Hughes. I was Fountain born in Hughes. Charlottesville, Virginia. My grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. My grandfather was 115 years old when he died. And now I am 101 years old. That's enough. She used to work. But what she made, I don't know. I never asked her. You just go ahead and talk away there. You don't <laughs> mind, do you, Uncle Pan? Now, and when, now your husband and you both are young. You all try to live like young people ought to live. Don't want everything somebody else has got. Whatever you get, it is your Be satisfied and don't spend your money until you get it. So many people get in debt. Well, that always oh, it's just cheap and I bought it. You spend your money before you get it because you're going in debt for what you want. When you want something, wait until you get the money and pay for it cash. That's what I've done. 
If I wanted anything, I waited until I got the money and I paid for it cash. I never bought nothing on time in my life. Now, plenty of people, if they want a suit of clothes, they go to work and they buy them on time. Well, they said it was cheap. If you got the money, you can buy them cheaper. They want something for, for waiting on you for, uh, till you get ready to pay them. And if you got the money, you can go where you choose and buy it when you, go, when you want it, you see? Now, by buying something on time, he's talking about credit because credit generates interest. The interest is paid for time, in case you're not following. Right. Don't buy it, of course, somebody else go down and run a debt and run a bill, or I'm going to run it too. Don't do that. I never done it. Now, I'm 100 years old, and I don't owe nobody five cents, and I ain't got no money. <laughs> but I'm happy, <laughs> just as happy as somebody that oh, got a million. Nothing worries me. I'm not, my head ain't even white. I, nothing I in the world that. worries me. I can sit here in this house till night. Nobody can come and say, Mr. Hughes, you owe me a quarter, owe me a dollar, you owe me five cents. No, you can't. I don't owe you nothing. Why? I never made no bills in my life. And I'm living too. And I'm a hundred years old. And if you take my advice today, you'll never make a bill. Of course, what you want, give me money, pay them cash. And then the rest of the money is yours. But when you run the bill, they, well, so much and so much, and you don't have to pay it. Nothing down. It's all, and when you come to pay, it's all, you have to pay no more. But they, they'll, they'll charge you more. They're getting something out of it, else they wouldn't trust you. But I can't just say what they're getting. But they're getting something out of it, else they wouldn't want your credit. Now, I tell you that. Anybody that trusts you for two dollars or a have an account with them by the month or by the week, store count or any count, they are getting something out of it. They'll say they don't want to accommodate you that much to trust you. Now, if I want, of course, I ain't got no clothes, but if I want some clothes, I, if I ain't got no money, I'm going to wait till I get the money to buy them. Indeed I am. I'm not going to say, of course, I can get them on trust. I go down and get them. i got to pay a dollar more anyhow. They'll either charge more if they say taxes or so much. But if I got the money to pay cash up, I pay the taxes and all down cash, then I, it's all done with. So many of colored people is head over heels in debt. Trust me, trust me. I get it on time. They want to set a furniture. Go down, pay down so much and rest on time. You done paid, the, done paid for them then. When you pay down so much, you may charge you $50 for hundred dollars for a set and you pay down twenty five dollars cash, you done paid for them. Mm. That's all it was worth, twenty five dollars. And you pay now you I'm seventy five dollars in debt now. Because I have to pay a hundred dollars that set. And it's only worth about twenty five dollars. But you mind on time. But people ain't got sense enough to know it. But when you get old like I am, you come in and you think, Well, I have done wrong. I should have kept my money until I wanted this thing, and when I wanted, I take my money and go cash cash for it. Else I uh, do without it. Yes. Suppose you want a new dress. You say, "Well, I uh, I buy it, but uh, I don't need it, but I can get it on time." Well, let's go down to the store today and get something on time. Well, you go down and get dressed on time, something else, and that, I want that to sell that to you on time. You don't have to pay nothing down. But there's a payday coming. And when the payday comes, they want you to come pay them. If you don't, they can't get no more. Well, if you never do that, if you don't start it, you will never end it. I never did buy nothing on time. I must sell you on this. I'm sitting right here now today, and if it's the last word I've got to tell you, I never even much as tried to buy a shirt on time. And plenty of people go to work, down to the store and buy uh, three and four dollars for a shirt, two, three, uh, seven, eight dollars for a pair of pants. Of course, they get them on time. I don't know, no, no. I say, I've got, I, I buy some for five dollars. Of course, I got the five dollars. I'll pay for it. I'm done with it. You talk about how old you are, Uncle Fountain. You well. <laughs> how far back do you remember? 
my memory. Well, I tell you, uh, things come to me in spirit, you know. I remember things uh, more when I'm laying down than I do when I'm standing, when I'm walking around. Mm -hmm. Now, in my boy days, why, boys live quite different from the way they live now. But boys wasn't as mean as they are now either. Boys live to, they had a good time, and the masters didn't treat them bad, and they was always satisfied. They never wore no shoes until they were 12 or 13 years old. And now people put on shoes on babies, you know, when they're two years, when they're month old, I'd be, I don't know how put shoes on babies. Just as soon as you see them out in the street, they got shoes on. I told a woman the other day, I said, I never had no shoes till I was 13 years old. She said, what, well, but you bruise your feet all up and stump your toes? I said, yes, many times I've stumped my toes and the blood run out of them. That didn't make them buy me no shoes. And I've been, oh, oh you wore a dress like a woman till I was, I believe, 10, 12, 13 years old. So you wore a dress, though? Yes, I didn't wear no pants, and of course, it didn't make boys' pants. Boys wore dresses. Now the women's wearing the dresses, and the boys are going with the, uh, well, the women's wearing the pants now, and the boys are wearing the dresses. Still. <laughs> Who did you work for, Uncle Sam? When who did I work for? Yeah. When I, you mean when I was a slave? Yeah, when you were a slave, who did you work for? Well, I belonged to um, uh, Burnley's when I was a slave. My mother belonged to Burnley's, my mother. Uh, but uh, we uh, was all slave children, and soon after, when we found out that we were free, well, then we were uh, bound out to different people, Ficklin, Andrew, and Andrews, and all such people as that, and we had run away and wouldn't stay with them, well, then we'd just go and stay anywhere we could, and lay out at night and anywhere. We had no home, you know. We had just turned out like a lot of cattle. You know how to turn cattle out in the pasture? Well, after freedom, you know, colored people didn't have nothing. Colored people didn't have no beds when they were slaves. They all slept on the floor. Pat it here and pat it there. Just like a lot of uh, wild people. We didn't, we didn't know nothing. We didn't like to look at no book. And there were some freeborn colored people where they had a little education, but there were very few of them where we was. And we all had a, what you call, I might call it now a uh, jail sentence. We just same as we were in jail. Now I couldn't go from here across the street, or I couldn't go to nobody's house without I have a note or something from my master. And if I had that pass, that was what we call a pass. If I had that pass, I could go wherever he sent me, and I'd have to be back. You know, you know, whoever he sent me to, they. They'd give me another pass, and I'd bring that back, so it's to show how long I'd been gone. We couldn't go out and stay an hour or two hours or something like that. They'd send you, now say for instance, I'd go to the Shirley's place, I'd have to walk, and I'd have to be back maybe in an hour, maybe they'd give me an hour, I don't know just how long they'd give me. But they'd give me a note so there wouldn't nobody interfere with me and tell who I belonged to. And when I come back, boy, I'd carry it to my master and give that to him. That'd be all right. But I couldn't just walk away like the people do us now, you know. We were what they call, we were slaves. We belonged to people. They sell us like they sell horses and cows and hogs and all like that, have an auction bench, and they put you on, up on the bench and bid on you, the same as you're bidding on cattle, you know. Was that in Charlotte that you were a slave? Hmm? Was that in Charlotte or Charlottesville? That is in Charlottesville. Charlottesville, Virginia. They sell the women sell them in. Oh, they'd, and then if they had any bad ones, they'd sell them to the nigger traders, what they call the nigger traders, and they'd ship them down south and sell them down south. But uh, otherwise, if you were a good good person, they wouldn't sell you. But if you were bad and mean, they didn't want to 
beat you and knock you around, they'd sell you to the what called a nigger trader. If that was regular, I was sailed every month, you know, at the courthouse. And then they'd sell you, maybe $200, $100, $500. Were you ever sold from one person to another? Hmm? Were you ever sold? No, I never was sold. You always stayed with the same, all, all same the person? Way. I was too young to sell. Oh, I see. See, I wasn't old enough during the war to sell, during the army. And uh, my father got killed in the army, you know, so it left us small children just to live on whatever people choose to give us. I was were, I were bound out for a dollar a month. And my mother used to collect the money. Children wouldn't, couldn't spend money when I come along. And, but, you know, in fact, when I come along, young men, young men couldn't spend no money until they're 21 years old. And then you're 21, well, then you could spend your money. But if you wasn't 21, you couldn't spend no money. I couldn't take, I couldn't spend 10 cents if somebody gave it to me. Hmm. Because they'd think, well, he might have stole it. We all come along. You might say we had to give an account of what you done. You, do, you couldn't just do things and walk off and say, I didn't do it. You'd have to give an account of it. Now, uh, after we got freed and it turned us out like cattle, we, could, we didn't have nowhere to go. And we didn't have nobody to boss us. And uh, we didn't know nothing. And there wasn't, wasn't no school. And when they started the little school, well, people that were slaves, they couldn't many of them go to school, except they had a father and a mother. And my father was dead, and my mother was living. But she had three, four other little children. She had to put them all to work for, to help take care of the others. So we had, well, we had what you call worse than dogs that got it now. The dogs that got it now better than we had it when we come along. I know, I remember one night I was out after I was free and I didn't have nowhere to go. I didn't have nowhere to sleep. I didn't know what to do. My brother and I was together. So we knew a man that had a, a living stable there. And we crept in that yard and got in one of the hacks of the automobile and slept in that hack all night long. So next morning, we could get out and go where we belonged. But we were afraid to go at night because we didn't know where to go. We didn't know what time to go. But we had got away from there and we were afraid to go back. So we kept in slipping that thing all night until the next morning and we got back where we belonged before the people got up. As soon as the day come to come out break, we got out and come to go where we belonged. But we never done that but the one time. After that, we. All these, if it was away, we'd try to get back before night come. But then that was on a Sunday, too, that we'd done that. Now, uh, when we were slaves, we couldn't do that, you see? Mm -hmm. And if we got free, we didn't know nothing to do. And my mother, she then she hunted places and bound us out for a dollar a month. And we stayed there maybe a couple of years. And She'd come over and collect the money every month. And a dollar was worth more then and ten dollars is now. And I, uh, and the men used to work for ten dollars a month, hundred and twenty dollars a year, used to hire that way. Uh, now you can't get a man for fifty dollars a month. If you pay a man now fifty dollars a month, you don't want to work for it. More like fifty dollars a week nowadays. <laughs> well, that's just it exactly. They want fifty dollars a week, and they ain't got no more now. And we had then, and we no more money. But of course, they bought more stuff, more property, and all like that. We didn't have no property. We didn't have no home. We had nowhere, nothing. We didn't have nothing. No, no, just to, like the cattle, we just turned out and uh, get along the best you could. Nobody to look after us. So been slaves all our lives. My mother was a slave, my sister was a slave, my father was a slave. Who was your father a slave for, Uncle Fallon? He was a slave for Burnley. He, he, belong, he belonged to Burnley. Didn't he belong to Thomas Jefferson at one time? He or? didn't belong to Thomas Jefferson. He my did. grandfather belonged to Thomas Jefferson. Oh, your grandfather did? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
My father belonged to uh, Burnley. And um, Burnley died during the war time because uh, he was afraid he'd have to go to war. But uh, now, you, and in them days, you could hire a substitute to take your place. Well, he couldn't get a substitute to take his place, so he ran away from home. And he took hold. And when he come back, the war was over, but he died. And then, uh, if he had lived, it couldn't have been no good. The Yankees just come along and, and just broke the mill open and rolled all the flour out in the river and broke the, broke the stove and sold all the meat out in the street and sold all the sugar out. And we, we boys would pick it up and carry it and give it to our mill missus and master, young masters, and until we come to be. Well, I don't know how. I don't know to tell you the truth. When I think of it today, I don't know how I'm living. None of the rest of them as I know are living. I'm the oldest one that I know that's living. But still, I'm thankful to the Lord. Now, if, uh, if my master wanted to send me, he never said, you couldn't get a horse and ride and walk, you, you know, and walk. You'd be barefooted, and cold, but it didn't make no difference. He wasn't no more than a dog, some of them, in the He wasn't treated as good as he treat dogs now. But still, I don't like to talk about it, because it makes, makes people feel bad, you know. Well, I, I could say a whole lot I don't like to say. I won't say a whole lot, no. Do you remember much about the Civil War? No, I don't remember much about it. You were a little young then, I guess, huh? Uh, yeah. I remember when the Yankees come along and took all the good horses and took all the, sort of all the meat and flour and sugar and stuff out in the river and let it go down the river. And they know the people who wouldn't have nothing to live on, but they done that. And that's the reason why I don't like to talk about it. People. And if you was cooking anything, you'd eat in there for yourself. And if they, if they was hungry, they'd go and eat it all up. You wouldn't even get nothing. They'd just come in and drink up all the milk and milk. And just do as you please. In time to be passing by all night long, walking, mud, raining. Oh, they had a cold time. Colored people is free. You ought to be awful thankful. And some of them are sorry they are free now. Some of them never rather be slaves. Mm. Which would you rather be, Uncle Fountain? Me? Which I'd rather be? <laughs> you know what I'd rather do? If I thought, had any idea, that I'd ever be a slave again, I'd take a gun and just end it all right away. Because you're nothing but a dog. You're not a thing but a dog. Night never comes out. You have nothing to do. Time to cut tobacco. If they want you to cut all night long out in the field, you cut. And if they want you to hang all night long, you hang. You hang tobacco. It didn't matter about your tired being tired, you're afraid to say you're tired. They just, well. When, when did you come to Baltimore? You know when, you don't remember when Garfield died, do you? When they, when they shot Garfield? No, I don't think you were born. I don't think no, there was. No. I don't know, remember what year that was myself now. But I know you wasn't born. I come to Baltimore that year and I, I don't remember what year it was now myself. But if I laid, if I was laying in the bed, I could remember. But uh, I don't remember now. Did you go to work for Mr. Shirley when you came to Baltimore? Oh, no, no. I worked for a man by the name of Reed when I first come to Baltimore. I used to uh, commence a haul manure for him. The old horses was here then. Uh, uh, le no, le no electric cars, no cable cars, all horse cars. 
And I used to hold the new go around the different stables and all that. People, everybody had horses for for the use when I first come here. They had coachmen, the men to drive them around. Didn't have them. automobiles. They hadn't been there so long. And and then they put on a cable car, what they call cable car. Well, they run them for a little while, or maybe a couple of three years or four years. Then somebody invented the electric car, and that first run on North Avenue. Well, they had to run a while, and they kept on inventing and inventing until they got them all, different kinds of cars involved. There was uh, horse cars, there wasn't no electric car at all. There wasn't no, wasn't no big cars like you got now, you know. I just can't, I just can't think of uh, what year it was. But uh, yeah. You're not getting tired, are you, young fan? No, no, I ain't. I'm just same as at home. It's like I'm sitting in the house. And, uh, I was thinking about, oh, now you know how we served the Lord when I come along, a boy? How was that? We would go to somebody's house, and, uh, well, we didn't have no houses like you've got now, you know. We had these, what they call, log cabins. And they have one old, one, maybe one old colored man would be there, or maybe he'd be as old as I am, and he'd be the preacher. Not as old as I am now, but he'd be the preacher, and they'd all sit down and listen to him talk about the Lord. Well, he'd say, well, I wonder, Sometimes you say, I wonder if we'll ever be free. Well, some of them say, well, we're going to ask the Lord to free us. So they say, well, we're, we're going to sing. Wonder shall I ever reach heaven. I wonder shall I fly. And they would sing that for about an hour. Then the next one they'd get up and say, let's sing a song. We're going to live on milk and honey. Way by and by, did. Oh, I can hear him singing now, but I can't, I can't uh, uh, repeat it like I could in them days. But someday when I'm not hoarse, I could tell you, and I could sing it for you, but I'm too hoarse now. And then he would sing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sing around the order. Oh, uh, I wish I could sing. I wish I could sing it for you. I'm going to sing around well, I wish order. you could, too. And, uh, they, they, uh, well, this, someday when you come over here and I'm not host, you get me to come up here and I'll, I'll sing. I'll try to sing it for you. Okay, I'm going to do that. This is, uh, now, I heard people here now sing uh, about roll, shirt, and roll. Well, that's the old time people. That's what the old people used to sing in the old back days. So roll, Jordan, roll. Yeah, but they don't sing it like the old people used to sing it in them days. Mm -hmm. They sing it quite different now. Uh, there's another one they sing. By and by, when the morning comes. Well, they sing that different too. But the old, they're getting the old people's song. I hear them come over the radio. I know them all. This is good as they, but they sing them different. They have different names. Yes, them. well, they cut them off short and all like that. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, if I had my voice, I would sing just one for you so you're going at it, but I can't do it on account of my voice. But someday you come over here, you come in to call me up and let me know now how my voice is. Ever since I took that medicine from my doctor, it hurt my voice. Hmm. I, uh, now there was a preacher in my house here, and he lived right next door to me, and he played on the piano. And he played something, and I sung it for him. 
And now he wants me to go down to his church next Sunday. I told him, I said, now, if I go down to your church, I'll not sing nothing. Because if I do, I'll get a horse I can't talk. But he said, Brother Hughes, I don't care whether you're singing or not. I just want you to go down there and let the people see who you are. Let them see what, uh, what old people is. I said, well, uh, more, I'll, go, I'll be glad to go down with you. So uh, next Sunday, I'm going down to his church if I leave him. Nothing happened. Yeah. But if he, if he sings something old, I... Uh, <laughs> I, I just sing along oh, with him. Oh, man. Good. I feel, I feel the spirit now, but I can't. I got to keep quiet. Now, you, do you ever hear this fellow that comes over the radio? I think they call him home. Comes over Sunday night about 12 o'clock on WFBR. You never no, heard I don't him. I've never heard him or not. Well, I, you turn him on. He comes on a quarter after 11 on Sunday night. Well, you must have heard him because he says, can God, you can't keep a good man down. So he makes so much noise, look like everybody ought to hear him. But now when that fellow comes on, I'm laying in the bed. Don't you know, I get just so I got to be in that, because it's all old time business. Mm -hmm. And uh, somebody don't like it, they says, uh, I don't like home. I says, why? Oh, he says, it makes too much noise. I said, well, the Bible says make a noise over Jesus. Jesus said make a noise over me. So he makes a noise over me. And I does enjoy it, certainly in show. Oh, he's, oh, oh, everybody, and he's got a big crowd, and we just get so happy. I got to do that, too. <laughs> Boy, when you feel the grace of God, you've got to jump up. I lay in bed, I got to get up. Help, do, help carry on. And then next morning, I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Gimad Medicine is just told me all this. Mm -hmm. uh, I sure hope it comes back again, because I'd like, I'd like to hear you sing. The old people used to say, I wonder if I shall ever reach heaven, or wonder shall I fly. Well, I used to could sing it. I can, well, sometimes I feel the spirit, you know, and I might get to sing something again someday. People now, I... Do you go to church every Sunday, Uncle Fan? No, don't go to church at all. I s listen to the radio. Listen to it on the radio, huh? Because I'll tell you why I don't go to church. Do you rather not have this on? Hmm? <laughs> you rather not tell me or you rather not have this on when you tell me? It don't make a difference. I ain't going to say nothing wrong. I ain't going <laughs> to say nothing wrong. If I, 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 I think... Pretty interesting, isn't it? Some of the stuff he's seen as a child, some of the ways he's been treated as a person. It's pretty compelling. Dogs had more rights than the slaves did. When you think about today, when uh, you look at dogs nowadays, Dogs get carried around in designer bags. Dogs are wearing designer sweaters. Dogs are wearing clothes. Like, that's crazy. Um, this has been Mr. Fountain Hughes. I have another video, but I don't remember her name. But I know her story because I listened to it before. The video is actually shorter, but she goes into some graphic stuff. So, yeah. That's been the voices of the slaves. You would like to think that slavery was over these days because it's being 2021. But it's really not. It's just a different form. In some ways, the treatment is the same or worse. It's just crazy out there. But this, I had to, I had to bring Mr. Hughes to you to kick off this 
series. And I'm going to keep it going as long as I have videos. And so if you're interested in this part of the uh, What You Watching series, or not series, the What You Watching title, I guess you want to, the brand or whatever you want to call it, of this channel, then uh, hit that sub and that bell so you can be alerted when, when uh, videos go up. Uh, I'm going to be touching on some more subjects outside of slavery and outside of uh, the black struggle. So, yeah. This is Aquarian OG. And I am OUT for now. Uh, over the weekend, I'm going to probably go live, if not later on today. So. Just keep an eye out. But we got some more stuff to bring to you. I want to bring these videos to you so they don't die off. And by die off, I mean I don't want them to fade. Because these are the voices of the true voiceless. If you get what I'm saying. But yeah. We're going to get into some more stuff with some more people and some more interviews, so stay tuned. Y'all have a good weekend. And tune in later on. Hit that bell, because I will be going live. Korean OG is O-U-T.